Deploy DigitalOcean functions using Jenkins. Serverless functions are often used by developers to quickly build applications for either web or mobile. They're also very highly scalable. In this video, we're going to be using Jenkins to deploy a function to DigitalOcean functions. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.332.3. Attached to this controller, I have an agent that has the DigitalOcean CLI installed on it. Down in the description of this video is a link to a sample repository that we're going to be building out throughout this video. So as I've already mentioned, my agent has the DigitalOcean CLI installed on it. If we take a look at the documentations for Functions Quick Start, one of the prerequisites is that you have to have DOCTL, which is the DigitalOcean CLI, and you also have it authorized to access your account. So at this point, I have the CLI installed, but I don't have my access set up. So let's go and do that now. Let's go into our console for DigitalOcean, and on the left nav, let's click on API. What we want to do is we want to go ahead and create a personal access token. So I'm going to generate new token. I'm going to give it a name. I'm just going to call it Jenkins. I'm going to change the expiration down to 30 days. I'm also going to leave the default scopes, which is read and write selected. We're going to go ahead and click on generate token. And now that I have a token, I'm going to copy this token and save it because I'm going to need it in order to set up a credential within Jenkins. Now, if we go back over and take a look at the documentation for our functions overview, what we can see is in using the DigitalOcean CLI or DOCTL, we have an option to call DOCTL serverless status. So on my local machine, I also have the CLI installed here. So if I do a DOCTL serverless status, what I'm going to see here is I'm unable to initialize the API client because an access token is required. Well, we just created an access token, but I don't really need to use it here because we're going to be using Jenkins to do all of the work for us. But I want to call out a couple of things here. If we take a look at DOCTL serverless dash dash help, one of the things that we'll notice here at the top is there are four aliases. The original name for this was Sandbox, but serverless and SLS and SBX and Sandbox are all the same command. So as we're building out our Jenkins file, you're going to see that although we may not be using serverless or sandbox, it's going to be one of these commands. Let's go back over to our documentation here. I've already gone ahead and created a project using this command right here, doctl serverless init dash dash language JS, and I gave it a name. Let's take a look at that project. Out on GitHub, and the link is down in the description, this is the output from running this command plus a git ignore and a Jenkins file. So when you run that init command, you get a project YAML and you get this packages sample hello and within that directory, you get a hello JS. Again, straightforward example directly from the DigitalOcean documentation. And this is what it looked like when I initially ran that command. Now we're at the point to where we're ready to do a deploy. But again, we're wanting to use Jenkins to do the deployment to this development namespace. Now notice I said development namespace. We're not going to be going through an example of deploying to production, but only the development namespace. So let's go back over to our VS code and let's take a look at the Jenkins file that I've roughed in so far. What we have here is we're going to run the commands that we saw over in the documentation. We're going to do a DOCTL SLS, which is an alias for serverless, which is also an alias for sandbox and run install. We'll do our connect, and then we'll do our deploy, and notice we're saying dot. And what that's meaning is deploy anything that you find within this directory structure. And then at the end, because I know what's happening, I'm going to go ahead and make a call to get the URL for the function that we deploy, which is actually called sample hello, and then we're just going to run it, passing in the name of Jenkins. And this is just a quick sanity check to make sure that the function has been deployed and is working. And here at the very bottom, we're doing an uninstall to offset the install that we did at the very beginning. Now you'll also notice that we need to set up a credential. We created our API token a little bit earlier. We're gonna create a credential for that in just a moment, but I want you to notice something. We have an environment variable named DigitalOcean underscore access underscore token. This is an environment variable that DOCTL is aware of. If you think back a moment ago, 
When we saw this command, when we tried to run it, it said we were unable to initialize the API client. Access token is required. Well, I could do an auth init and it will walk me through all of the steps that I want to do, or I can just as easily provide an environment variable with the value of that token. So from a Jenkins perspective, we're going to create a secret text credential with the value of the token. And then when this pipeline runs, this environment variable will be set up with the correct value. And then DOCTL will be able to authenticate because this environment variable has been set. So let's go ahead and go back into our controller and let's set up that credential. Manage Jenkins, manage credentials. And let's create a new secret text credential. Okay, let me grab the value of that token, paste that in. And just so I don't mess up, let me go back over and grab how we're referencing this ID, DO API token. We'll do the same thing for the description. Okay, so now we have our secret text set up. Let's go back over to our dashboard and let's go ahead and create a new item. We'll call it DO dash functions. We'll go to pipeline, click OK. Let me go back over and get the URL to this repository. There we go. We'll go down here, change pipeline script to from SCM, change this to get URL. Don't need a credential for that. We'll do main and Jenkins file. Okay, let's go ahead and click on save. And then let's go ahead and click on build now. And as we watch this run, what we're going to see is it's going to clone out the repository. We set up our credential. We ran our serverless install. We do our connect and you can see that we're connected to the function namespace fn dash some string. We see our doctl sls deploy dot. We can see it's been deployed. We get the URL and then we do a curl against that URL and we can see that we're getting back a hello Jenkins. And then finally, we do our uninstall. Now, what do I need to do if I'm ready to create a new function? Well, I could set up a whole new project or I could go ahead and just add that new function to this existing project, which is what we're going to do. So let's go back into VS Code. I'm gonna create, instead of a hello, I'm gonna create a goodbye function. I'm gonna copy hello, paste it into goodbye. Let's rename it to goodbye. And instead of saying hello, let's say goodbye. Okay, everything looks good there. Let's go back into our Jenkins file. Let's make a modification here. We don't have to make any changes to the deploy. So the deploy will pick up that new function that we just added to this overall project. But what I want to do is I want to go ahead and add in this verification step. So I'm gonna say hello, goodbye, and change this to goodbye. And I believe that's it. So let's go ahead and go back over here. Let's add these two files in. We'll type in goodbye. Let's push these changes up. Let's go back over to our Jenkins controller. Let's run the job one more time. We'll see here, much like before, we have our credentials set up. We do the installation to get us set up for the sandbox. We do our connect. We do our deploy. We do our check for hello. We can also see that goodbye was deployed. And we also have our output of goodbye Jenkins. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.